Good morning. And welcome to the Ironwood Wesley United Methodist Church. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Keith Mulliken. I am the pastor at both the Ironwood Wesley United Methodist Church and the Wakefield United Methodist Church. I want to begin this morning by thanking very much the Reverend Pamela Starr for filling in for me for the last two weeks in my time of need. Uh, Pamela, your assistance is appreciated more than you will ever know. Um, I also want to thank all of you for your patience, your kind words, and your prayers. Um, they have been invaluable to me and uh, my brother and his family in this, in, in this time of sorrow. So what do you say we start our worship? Let's begin with a reading of Psalm 99. The Lord is king. Let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. Mighty king, lover of justice, you have established your equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Extol the Lord our God. Worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel also was among those who called on his name. They cried to the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them in the pillar of cloud. They kept his decrees and the statutes that he gave them. O oh Lord, our God, you answered them. You were a forgiving God to them, but an avenger of their wrongdoings. Extol the Lord, our God, and worship at his holy mountain. For the Lord, our God, is holy. <clears throat> and now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn of preparation today is, What Does the Lord Require? Number 444, excuse me, 441.
A reading from the first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. From Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you, because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of people we prove to be among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place where your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. This ends our epistle lesson. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 22, verses 15 through 22. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us, then, what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. This is the word of God for the children of God. Okay, so how many of you truly enjoy paying your taxes? Show of hands. Okay, I saw one hand go up. Not many people really, really enjoy paying taxes, and that's okay because we're not going to talk today about paying taxes. Even though with the election just a couple of weeks away, and taxes have probably been on our minds more than usual. No, today, instead of talking about taxes, as the gospel passage seems to suggest we should, we're going to talk about images. Specifically, graven images. So let's set the scene a little bit. First, we have the Pharisees. And they're plotting to trap Jesus. Now here's something very interesting. Who do they go to to help them in their plot? They go to the Herodians. Now, most people don't remember who the Herodians are. They are basically the followers of Herod. They were Roman sympathizers. 
So we've got the Pharisees on the one hand, the very, very religious conservatives, followers of Jewish law, very strict followers of Jewish law. And that Jewish law says that they should not pay tax to the emperor. And yet they go to the Herodians, Roman sympathizers. Quite possibly, some of them are tax collectors themselves. Does the phrase, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, come to mind? Both of these groups, from completely opposite ends of, at that time, the political spectrum, kind of sounds familiar, I can kind of relate that to some things going on today, but we won't get into that. Two groups of people from completely different ends of the political and religious spectrum are coming together to try to entrap Jesus in a trick, a trick of words. You see, the Pharisees believe that if they can get Jesus to say, yes, you should pay the tax, then the religious Jewish conservatives will rise up against Jesus and not want him. And the Herodians believe that if they can get Jesus to say, no, you shouldn't pay the tax, then they can get the Roman soldiers to come and arrest Jesus for that alone. So it is a trap. Now, what do they do? when they first go to Jesus? Do they walk up to him and demand answers? No, they use flattery. Even though it's true, every word that they said is true, it is so insincere. They're just trying to soften him up a little bit, butter him up, so to speak, get him to let his guard down a little bit. Teacher, you're so wise. You you speak impartially. You, You don't judge harshly. So we have a question for you. And then they ask Jesus the question about taxes. Is it right to pay the tax to the emperor? Now, I said this a few weeks ago, you really got to wake up very early to fool the Lord. You've heard the expression, you got to wake up pretty early. Well, you got to wake up at the dawn of time in order to fool the Lord. So he wasn't fooled. He wasn't fooled by their flattery. He wasn't fooled by their question. He knew it was a trap, and he calls them out on it. He calls them hypocrites. And then there's his answer. He simply says, Show me the coin that is used for the tax. And they give him a denarius. And he answers their question with a question. Whose image is this on the coin? And whose title? And they tell him, it's Caesar's. Now, I want to let you know that the title on that coin would have read Tiberius Caesar, son of the divine Augustus. Now, what is that? His face and his title on the coin. That is a graven image. It's an idol. Thou shalt not worship false gods. If we look to our letter to the Thessalonians this morning, one of the largest amounts of praise that the disciples could give to the Thessalonians was their turning their back on idols and worshiping the true and living God. And yet we've got the Herodians and the Pharisees arguing over the graven image on a coin and whether or not it's right to pay tax with that coin. And Jesus says, Well, if this is the emperor's face and the emperor's title, give back to Caesar that which is Caesar's and give to God that which is God's. Now, here is what I believe to be the crux of this passage. That coin was created in Caesar's image. What was created in God's image? 
Or more to the point, who was created in God's image? The answer is clear. You meet them every day. It's all of us. We were created in God's image. As that coin was created in Caesar's image, we should give that coin back to Caesar. And whatever was created in God's image, we should give to God. So we give of ourselves to the Lord. Those other images, and yes, we even have images on our own currency. They typically have the faces of presidents, the leaders of our nation, and throughout the world, there's always a leader's face on the coin, on the currency. And those belong to the government. They belong to people. But we, we belong to God. I know I said I wasn't going to talk about paying taxes, but this should make you feel a little bit better about it. That money does not belong to God. It doesn't even really belong to us so much because we belong to God. So don't feel so bad about paying your percentage. It's okay. Because we will give of ourselves to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Our closing hymn today is God of Grace and God of Glory, number 577. Go forth in peace. The grace of God the Father, the love of his Son, Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Let's sing God be with you till we meet again. Mm -hmm.